Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jamila and I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup, I love all things skincare, and I especially love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I would absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the family. Okay, you guys already saw the thumbnail, you already saw the title, you know why you are here. I had actually reached out on Instagram and said, would you guys like to see an updated eyeshadow basket of shame? And <laughs> it was like an overwhelming yes. So I am here to oblige. Now I have no makeup on my face because I'm still kind of recovering from some DPNs that I had removed cosmetically. So, I mean, you're probably used to seeing me have some of those like dark spots here, but I got all of those removed so they were burnt off or cut off and I couldn't wear any makeup or any of my skincare my acne prescription products for two weeks so I'm still in that period so no makeup on this face it might be a couple videos where you see me with no makeup don't be surprised okay <laughs> now that being said my eyeshadow basket of shame so it's more like baskets <laughs> because I've things have gotten a little bit out of control I haven't used up as much makeup as I wanted to so the way this video is actually gonna work is I'm gonna go through all of the palettes that I have not used haven't touched um, some of them I've swatched but I haven't put it on my eyes that's what I'm looking at in terms of not used so I'm gonna go through those and this is actually gonna be a little bit of a declutter because quite frankly I did this over six months ago and there are palettes that I've had at this point for like a year still haven't touched them so I really want to go through the basket of shame and figure out is it staying is it going am I really ever gonna use it because I don't like having things just go to waste and it feels like there's a lot of things that are going to waste and I don't feel the same about it when I did when I hit like add to cart checkout so it's gonna be what's in my basket of shame as well as what I'm gonna be decluttering as well so without further ado let's just dive into the video Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this basket, and like I said, it's several baskets, so we have a long, long ways to go. Oh, and final thing before we jump in, I will have my Macari linked down below, so any of the things that I'm planning on declutter will be on the Macari. They're not gonna be super pricey, quite frankly, I'm not about trying to recoup what I spent. I would just rather get this to a good home and get it out of my home because it's beginning to feel a little bit cluttered, so if you are interested in some of the palettes that I'm talking about, it will be linked on my Macari. All right, let's dive in. First things first, the Melt Cosmetics Muerte palette. Now, this was a palette I had been lusting over for a while. It was supposed to be discontinued, but y'all know discontinued is a myth, right? So this is the packaging for it. It's that kind of um, Day of the Dead feel. It is half of a skull, so there is another palette here that is pretty bright. I actually considered buying the bright one to complete this, but one, it's hella expensive on Macari, and I'm not paying them reseller prices. And two, I'm not gonna use the shades. So to buy it just for the aesthetic of having both together doesn't make sense, especially now because I have nowhere to store this, so it wouldn't be something that I could actually physically store and look at. So it did make a ton of sense for me. Now this did arrive slightly broken, one shade, um, Shade. Savage, which is the matte, arrived slightly broken, so I'm gonna try to be careful so that I don't drop it. But this is the Melt Morte palette. I haven't touched this, haven't swatched it. I am gonna keep this because I do want to try it, because like I said, I'd been lusting over this for a while. But I did see a couple of reviews and people didn't seem to be quite impressed. So maybe this might be one that, you know, gets left behind in the future but as of right now I am still pretty interested and excited by this one so it is gonna stay in my collection for now. Next I'm gonna talk about my BH Cosmetics palettes because I actually have a lot more than I probably should. I did go ahead and already declutter the Christmas one from last year. I gave it to my fiance's niece because I knew I wasn't gonna use it. It was too big. It had press glitters in there. She's just getting into makeup so I was like here you go, sweetie. Enjoy. So I got rid of that one and I feel really good. It was brand new, hadn't touched it yet, and we're coming around to next Christmas. So glad to get that out. But I do have a bunch more BH Cosmetics palettes, all of which I got from the, um, not the CCO, from TJ Maxx. So the first two I have are the Avocado Toast and the Blueberry Muffin palettes. Both of these were $7.99 at TJ Maxx. So honestly, quite reasonably priced. I think they are like $15 or were $15. I don't even know if these are still available. This was before BH got sold, so... Who knows what's happening, right? So this is the Avocado Toast palette. I do want to keep this one because I've heard great things. I think it is a nice mix of greens and neutral shades, and I do like both of those colors very much. 
haven't swatched this yet, but I've heard really great things about this palette. It does seem to have really good depth. So I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this just so that I can try this and see how I feel about it. And because I really like the color story of this one, I'm going to hold on to this. The Blueberry Muffin Palette. Can't remember how this looks now. Okay, so, oh, so it's a blue, blue palette. I have really not been into monochromatic palettes and I don't know how much you all get out of this, but I am going to hold on to this just a little bit because it does have some of those cooler tone grays and silvery shades that I don't have a ton of in my collection. So I'm going to hold on to this for now because I do want to actually try this one out. Next from BH Cosmetics is the Sweet Shop Collection. So I had mentioned this in my last basket of shame that I found all of these at TJ Maxx. They all were $7.99, so honestly pretty affordable. I did want this when it first released, but I wasn't willing to pay $18 per palette. And then when they restocked it, I also wasn't willing to pay $18 per palette. But when it got to TJ Maxx and it was $7.99, you know, those are the prices that I could work with. But the reality is, for this whole collection, the only palette that I've actually used is the green one, which is the pistachio palette. So I've actually used this one, so it's technically not in my basket of shame. It's a nice palette. I love green eyeshadow. I just don't go for monochromatic palettes. I prefer my palettes to have a little bit of options in there where I can get a couple different color stories. So while I did like the look that I created with this, I don't think that this is something that I would reach for again because if I am feeling for a green look, I have a ton of other palettes that have green in it plus something else, which is what I like. So I'm definitely decluttering that one. Um, I also have the Sugar Cone palette. This is the most basic of the set. It is just a neutral palette. See, really pretty, nice depth. It would work good for a number of skin tones, but it's not gonna be my neutral palette that I reach for. So also gonna declutter this. Then there's the Cherry on Top. This is the red one, but it kinda is more pink than red. And this is definitely not the kind of red that I like and also not the pink palette that I would reach for. So I'm gonna get rid of this one as well. You see where this is going. I think they're all gonna go. And I will probably just do like a bundle on Macari, like 10 bucks for all of these because yeah, they just need to go. And like I said, I've only swatched it, all of these with the exception of the green one. The green one is the only one that I actually put on my eyes. Everything else was just swatched. And then there's the orange sorbet beautiful orange palette but like I said monochromatic is not my thing I also feel like this one is missing a deep shade in there wish it had just one deeper matte and the last one is the bubblegum and this is the blue one this one I'm torn on I love blue eyeshadow I might actually hold on to this for a little bit because I really want to try this out because blue eyeshadow really is my jam so I'm gonna hold on to the blue one for now but I'm gonna get rid of these four. So orange, red, the neutral one, and the green. So those are gonna go. Okay, next up, I have this stupid love palette from Lady Gaga. Why did I say her name like that? Weird. Uh, this was before she rebranded, so this is the old Lady Gaga palette. This might be on the chopping block if we're being honest. Never use this. Got this at 50% off on Amazon when she was leaving Amazon. I don't know. I don't know, nah. Mm. I might want to try this at least once. We'll see. We'll see. But this is in my basket of shame. Next, I have the Too Faced Cinnamon Swill Palette. This was one that I picked up because it went on sale, but this is... This is the same palette they re-release every year. Really cute, adorable packaging. It's warm neutrals. I have all of these shades 12 times over, even from Too Faced. It smells amazing, but this is definitely not a palette that I see myself ever reaching for. So I'm gonna declutter this one. Never touched this, never swatched it, never used it, and I don't think I ever would. Then I have the Cinderella palette from Sigma. I had like a 50% off coupon, so I just bought a bunch of Sigma palettes, none of which I've used yet. I don't think I'm gonna declutter this just yet because I want to actually try the formula. It is really pretty. I have not tried the Sigma formula yet. 
this color story definitely feels a little chaotic to me looking at it now when i first saw it i was like oh that's beautiful now i'm just like this just feels kind of like chaos but we'll see if the formula is amazing and it blows me away maybe i will change my mind and like i said i bought a bunch of sigma palettes so this is one of many so hold up they're coming they will be coming so this palette is kind of not in my basket of shame kind of is i've used a couple of shades from this but i haven't really used used this palette this was sitting on my desk for a while for me to use it and i found myself reaching for some deep mattes when i was using other palettes that just didn't have the mattes that i needed i ended up reaching into this for some deep mattes worked well i love this sydney grace formula definitely not going to declutter this i did purchase this one for myself when they had their um what was that sale their christmas in july sale i did pick this up for myself did i need it no sis definitely didn't but it kind of reminds me of the cult beauty palette that i really like i'm gonna hold on to it for now because i do like the sydney grace formula and i can actually rearrange the shadows so this one will stay for now next i have two palettes two omi beauty palettes y'all already know when i finally tried the uma beauty formula i was blown away it really is pat mcgrath quality like no shade no tea really is pat mcgrath quality like so after trying the freedom palette i just i had to get them all and they have had at least two or three 30 percent off sales so i picked up some more so this is the poise palette it has blues um, and neutrals it doesn't seem to have a ton of the same sparkles as the freedom palette only this gold magical shade seems to be the same formula the others kind of look like they're more satin like so We'll see. I don't know if this will be one that I fall in love with. And then I picked up the Allure palette. And can we just give like a moment for packaging? If nothing else, their packaging is flawless. And this one does have more of those like sparkly shades that remind me of the one in the Freedom palette. This is a beautiful color story. It definitely inspires me. Definitely not decluttering this one because I have truly, truly come to realize how underrated the Oma Beauty formula is. And I can't wait to play with these two. Just gotta get them out there, you know? And then the last palette in this basket of shame is the Tarte Man Eater palette. I picked this up because I did not really see anyone of a deeper complexion use this. I still really wanna use it. I'm trying I'm planning to do a like uncancelled question mark video talking about Tarte where they were, where where they are now, whether they are fully uncancelled. And I want to use this palette in this video. I think it's a beautiful fall palette, but I also think it's a really just beautiful neutral palette to begin with. It does have this one pop of green, which feels kind of random, but once you cover the green, it is like pinks and browns. So really pretty. I swatched it in store. I really liked how it swatched super duper sparkly. Hopefully the mattes perform well because I didn't swatch the mattes, but I am looking forward to keeping this and trying it. I also really enjoy the packaging. It's very, very sleek, super thin. Like, you see that? So thin. So this one is definitely not being decluttered. Okay, one basket down. I think I have like four more to go. Again, don't judge me. Also, like complete sidebar. It is like the middle of November and it is like 80 degrees here. I'm hot as hell. I'm like sweating. Oh, Jesus. Anyways, moving right along. Next up in my second-ish basket of shame is the Plain Jane palette from Adept Cosmetics. I have really grown to, like, enjoy Adept Cosmetics. The star of the show for them are their shimmers. Um, not all of their palettes have great mattes. I've said it many, many times. And this is an all-shimmer palette. So there are no mattes in here, but there are some really beautiful shimmers. And I know a lot of folks love this. I also... From looking at this can see that there are different textures to the shimmers so some look like they have a little bit more chunk to it some look like they're a little bit smoother so i'm really looking forward to playing in this palette i obviously will have to pair this with a matte palette most likely blend bunny but this is definitely not going anywhere my adept palettes are definitely ones that i reach for pretty often then i finally picked up the palette that i said i'd been wanting for some time <laughs> and that is the supreme nudes palette so when i did my you know makeup i regret not buying video collab with um bad to the bro millie millie from bad to the bro one of the palettes that i talked about was the supreme nudes palette from artist couture i had been wanting this for a while and one of you guys actually reached out to me and said that hey they're having a 
buy one get one free on their palettes sale and I was like okay say less <laughs> so I picked up the Supreme Nudes palette which I think is just a gorgeous neutral palette really beautiful and I know folks love the quality of this one so I really wanted to try it so I picked up this one so that one's definitely not going anywhere because it is one that I've been hoping to get my hands on but to get the buy one get one free I also picked up the Supreme Bronze palette now this one definitely has those warmer tones and I think it might actually pair really well with the Supreme Nudes and we'll have to see because I'm now wondering should I just keep Supreme Nudes because this is the one that I really want and then the Clutter Supreme Bronze but I haven't tried the formula yet so yeah we will have to see but these are both of them together they definitely do pair really well Right now, I will hold on to both of them. I've been on this like real neutral kick and they both fit into that neutral family. So I will hold on to them for now. You already know, I'm not a big declutter person. Um, next, I have this little itty bitty baby palette from Sigma. This was from their holiday collection last year. My fiance actually got this one for me, so I'm definitely not decluttering this. It is a beautiful like purple color story, a little bit on the cool tone side. And I love how travel friendly and tiny this is. This one's definitely not going anywhere. I just haven't had a chance to use it yet. The It actually came as a part of a set that had a blush and a lip gloss lipstick lip set something actually where is that set i know this isn't a part of the basket of shame but the set actually did come with a makeup bag and then you got this lip kit which has two lipsticks and a lip gloss and there is a blush that also came with it and it was such a thoughtful gift and he knew that i did not like have any sigma products <laughs> which means he pays attention because i have a lot of makeup so it's a really really beautiful set I just haven't had a chance to try it or film with it yet. Then I picked up two Juvia's Place palettes. I rarely use my Juvia's Place palettes. That's totally on me. I don't know why I bought these. But this is the Olori 3 palette. Really gorgeous, honestly. This bronze shade is stunning. I really gotta use this. And then I have Olori 1. This was the one that I really wanted for these two kind of blue shades. They're so pretty, so pretty. Juvia's Place has an amazing eyeshadow formula, but I feel like we just don't really talk about it as use it or use it as much anymore. But for now, I'm keeping both. Definitely not getting rid of, red, not getting rid of either of those Juvia's Place palettes. Okay, on to the next basket. Doing my best. Please don't judge me, y'all. Okay. So first up, I have this Desert Lights palette from, this is Flower Beauty. This is a drugstore brand. It's Drew Barrymore's brand. It's actually really nice. The quality of her shadows are really, really superb. They are a little bit pricey. They aren't super drugstore because I think this was like $20. The, we will have a conversation about drugstore prices soon. <laughs> but taking that aside, beautiful. It's neutral. I think that this is a great palette to travel with. All you need is like some staple mattes and then you take these shimmers and you can stay in that very neutral vein. And I have the um, Jungle Lights one, which I really enjoyed, which is why I decided to pick this one up because I've also heard great things about this one and I knew I liked the formula from the Jungle Lights. I have this Wonderland palette from IBY Beauty. I found this in TJ Maxx. I wanted to do a full face of TJ Maxx makeup. Haven't gotten to it, obviously. And it's such a pretty palette. It's so stinking cute. Like, look at that. It is gorgeous. Uh, I, want, I, I want you all to see the true color. It's looking a little bit washed out here. But it is beautiful. I just haven't had a chance to use it. And I don't know if I will. It is a somewhat neutral palette. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my declutter pile for now. Because we, we got to make room. Things got to go can't keep everything. Next up, I have the Hella palette from Odin's Eye. This was the collab that they did with Angelica Nyquist. Eh, I don't know. I haven't used it. I don't know. I really don't know why I bought it. I wasn't really drawn to the color story. I'm gonna hold on to it for now because I do want to actually try it. I think that this formula is a stunning formula that Odin's Eye has been working on. I have some of their older palettes and when I compare the two, these newer palettes definitely have a better formula. But this is definitely one I can see being on the chopping block. Even now I'm looking at it and I'm like, are you really gonna use this? I don't know. 
Like I don't feel the same excitement for this palette that I did for like Tina or um, what's her face? Annette or Judy. Like I like those palettes more and those color stories make me more excited. This one, not so much. I'm gonna put this to the side because I'm not, I'm not sold on this one yet. She might be on the chopping block. The packaging is adorable. I just, this isn't my color story. Then I have this Makeup Geek Mattes palette that I just, I don't know why I've never used this as I have so many Shema palettes. I should use this. I should put this on my desk. But this was when Makeup Geek was closing. I, everything was like 50% off. So I bought this one because the original price was like $125, which is a lot. But for 50% off, I thought that it was worth it for the amount of shades that you get. So I still have it. Haven't touched it yet. I also have this Posh Cultia palette that I I think I'm gonna get rid of. It's called Color Me Carnival. It is a rainbow palette, beautiful, pigmented. Uh, Makeup Toys does um, like carnival makeup. And y'all know, I am a true Caribbean Trini girl, love carnival, but this is pretty much all mattes and I am not, I don't know if this would be the matte palette that I would reach for. You know what I mean? Even though it's like a carnival themed palette, these just aren't the mattes that I would go for if I'm looking for colorful mattes. I would much quicker reach for my Blend Bunny palettes. And I haven't even tried it yet. I just, when you like what you like, it just, you know, it's hard to deviate from that. So that might be on the chopping block too. Like I want to keep it because it has, you know, carnival things in there. I believe the collab person toys is a trini so i want to support I, well, I did support so i already bought the palette anyways it might it might be on the chopping block but check my makari out everything that didn't survive will be on there then i have this moon spell volume 2 palette this was one that i won in a giveaway from queer bones beautiful purple pinky color story definitely want to try this i've heard great things about the formula in here so i'm gonna hold on to this to give it a try i have really been enjoying the luna beauty formula especially the one in that nude palette Ooh, baby so hopefully this is similar or exactly the same to that but this one is not being decluttered i also really like that this is actually kind of like a book and it goes into the sleeve like this it's so cute such a cool concept okay y'all won't judge me but I'll take that judgment because I can't believe that it's been pretty much a year and I haven't used my two Natasha Denona mega palettes. Now these are the 28 pan palettes. These typically retail for 200 plus dollars, but during Black Friday, she usually has them for a buy one get one, which I think makes it worth it. And I picked it up last Black Friday and this is supposed to be her top tier formula. So there's the green brown one, haven't touched this yet. I cannot believe this. I am kicking myself 12 times over. Uh, I really need to use this one. I just don't know what I'm holding out for. So this is going to be, this is going to be one that I put at the top of the list. And then there is the purple, what is it? Purple what? Purple blue? I think it's purple blue. Yeah. Purple blue one. Also really pretty. Can't believe I haven't touched this one yet either. So, yes, I am ashamed. That is why we're doing this video. And then lastly for this basket, I have the pastel palette from Playing in Makeup by Yolando. I kind of feel like I missed the chance to try this during spring, and I do want to try this because Playing in Makeup by Yolando is a black-owned beauty brand, and when it comes to pastels, most mainstream brands and even some indie brands, they give us ash, right? And these really do look like they have great pigmentation and that they would work well for a deeper complexion. So I'm not ready to declutter this yet because I haven't had a chance to try it. And I wanna see if they did pastels for deeper complexions right. Now I am of the firm belief that not everything is for everybody. So, so you know, pastels may not just, may, just may not be for me. So that's fine, but I do want to say that I gave it a try. I just didn't like how it looked and that's that. Okay, on to basket number, what's this, three or four? Again, just gonna keep powering through. Stop judging me. 
So first up, I have the Martine, Martine, is it Martine? I think it's the Martine, no, Martine Cosmetics is the brand. But this is their 669 palette. I first saw this when Cara from Beauty and the Frizz did a video on it. It looked so good. It's like this beautiful grungy palette and I wanted to try it. Now the packaging is gorgeous, but she is chunky. So you can see it's pretty thick. It does have that like trunk like feel. You can open the clasp and it's pretty, it's, it's cool. It's giving Jeffree Star, but it is cool. And it's thick. It's kind of like, I prefer thinner, more storage friendly type packaging now than the, oh, this is a cute concept kind of thing, but that's just me. But here we have it. It's a pretty grungy, beautiful color story. My girl Dion from Dion Loves Makeup did do a comparison of this to the Haunted Europe palette. I definitely recommend you check out her video because if you missed out on Haunted Europe and you were thinking about getting this one instead, I think that could really help you decide if you want to get this one. I haven't tried it yet. I don't know what the formula is like. It's definitely on my to try list. It, there is a beautiful multi-chrome here that I'm dying to try as well as here. There are a couple, what? There are several multi-chromes in this. What in the... Okay, this just like jumped to the top of my to try pile because there are multiple multi-chromes in here and I feel like I didn't realize that. I am ashamed, so ashamed. Okay, moving along. So I have the California Coast palette from Sydney Grace. I believe I swatched this, yes. I did swatch this. This is the deep um, version. I did get this um, in PR from Sydney Grace. It is beautiful. It's a really nice palette. But it's definitely not one that I'm going to reach for super often because it is a pretty pinky peachy palette. I have a lot of pinky peachy palettes. So I'm probably going to give this to my sister. She likes these kind of colors. She likes these kind of very neutral, simple colors. So I'm going to end up giving this to her because I don't see myself reaching for this very often. So decluttered. Okay, now I have a number of Viseart palettes. And I want to say that all of these I picked up at BoxyCharm during their drop shop sale or their mega drop shop sale for pretty, pretty cheap. So, yay me. But since I picked them up, I haven't used any of them. So, not yay me. Anyways. So first up, I have the Bijouet palette. I will say this is some of the cutest packaging. I love the Viseart packaging, and I also think that it's cute yet storage friendly, travel friendly. I think this is a gorgeous color story. This is definitely one that I really wanted and I'm still keeping because I wanna play in it. Viseart has a very nice formula. It's very soft, um, but beautiful, kind of effortless. And I like that because not everything needs to be super sparkly and shiny and over the top. So definitely keeping that one. I also have the Petite Mattes Editorial Brights. This is when they edited down the um, giant palettes that were like 80 bucks to these smaller palettes, which I love. Like the reality is if you have a large makeup collection, you're not gonna use up the makeup. So this is, I think is a perfect size, really gorgeous, really beautiful. And especially for these bright shades that I don't think people use on an everyday basis, this makes a lot of sense. I wanna make, I wanna try this one and compare it to my Blend Bunny blends palette because the Viseart Matte's formula and the Blend Bunny's formula are the two matte formulas that I hear people rave about all the time. So I want to see how similar or different they are. This door just like, I don't have a ghost y'all. It's just the breeze. Okay, moving along, I have the Violet Autumn Dew palette. This is the purple one. I've heard good things about this one. I know Morgan Taylor loves this. It's one of her favorite purple palettes. I really do like purple eyeshadow. I don't wear it a lot, but I do enjoy it. It's beautiful. I'm gonna hold on to this because this does have some really interesting cool cool, cool toned shades that I wanna give a try. Truthfully, I don't think I'm getting rid of any of these Viseart palettes. They're just really great to have. It's an amazing formula. Then I have Paris Love Letter and I love the packaging on these. They're so good. I should probably just take these out the box. This I've heard folks compare to the Sydney Grace Tiny Marvels palette. I think Sydney Grace has a little bit more punch to it. So this might be a good option if you don't like the intensity of Sydney Grace shadows, because while they are beautiful, I will agree with that they are thick. So they feel thick and a little bit heavy on the lids, but you get the full pigment and punch. But if you don't like that thick feeling, 
you probably won't like the Sydney Grace formula all that much and I think that might possibly could maybe be an option. I'm saying all of that might possibly could maybe be because I haven't tried it so that's just a guess. Just a guess. And this last one is the Min Minext at Autumn Dew which is the warm toned kind of neutral one. So pretty. I should definitely, I do have a work trip coming up pretty soon, so I might take one of these with me because they're so easy to travel with. Okay, and then I have a couple of bigger palettes. So I have the Natasha Dona Glam palette. I picked this up on Macari for about 50% off, I believe. If you are interested in palettes, like some of the older palettes, definitely check out Macari. You can oftentimes find a lot of them brand new, like this one. Like this is the Glam palette, got it brand new on Macari. It is a really beautiful palette. I'm looking forward to trying this. Haven't played in it yet, but she cute. But yeah, Macari and Poshmark, those are really great places to try to find makeup. And a lot of times you can get new makeup on there. I've definitely picked up a bunch of new palettes there. Um, no, I've used the bronze palette, so this should be out of my basket of shame because I've used it already. I also have the retro palette. Again, this was another Macari find and another one that I haven't picked, I haven't used yet. It is really beautiful, I'll give it that, and the more I look at it, the more I see like the new Dream palette and how this really does align with that. But yeah, haven't used it. And what I realized is that I actually like the Dream palette a little bit more because I feel like there's more versatility. With retro and glam, and bronze these are so monochromatic that like you really only get one kind of look and the more I like learn my makeup preferences I just don't like monochromatic palettes and that's one of the things that has really stood out to me is that I just don't like monochromatic palettes uh, I also have in this some of these things in this basket I've used before so this is the glam face palette this is the deep version yes I've definitely used the deep but I liked the, the, the deep so much that I actually went ahead and picked up the light version. I was trying to mix and match these two, but the shades in here aren't removable, so I couldn't do that. So I have the light version and I haven't used this one yet. I kind of fall in terms of being able, I fall in between the light and the dark, which is why I wanted to mix and match because the light shades here I, want, I needed some of these light shades to add to the dark palette because the transition shades there were smidge too dark and I need so I needed to add some of these light shades to the dark palette and take some of those darker shades and put it in this one so yeah that's how, that's how we got here can't remove these so they're still here and I haven't used this one yet I'm gonna keep both though because these are really nice and the shimmers in them are that kind of like really beautiful toppery kind of shimmer so and I've heard people compare it to the new makeup by Mario palette but yeah, it's a really great travel palette where you have blush, highlight, and some eyeshadow in there. Then I have the Rose Quartz palette from Huda Beauty. This was another Macari find. <laughs> and I really wanted to get this one because I've heard so many people rave about this. Her big palettes really are something to behold. And what I love about it is that she only does one of these each year. So it's easy to collect her palettes because she doesn't do like a ton of these big ones each year. They are on the pricey side, but when you look at it, 65, or oh, is it $67 now? You know, everything went up. $65 once a year, I'm happy to collect these. And like I said, Macari, especially, here's the thing. Let's, you know, pause for a second. The, the brands that I like to shop on Macari and Poshmark specifically are Natasha Denona, Charlotte Tilbury, and, um, Huda Beauty. I found that there are a lot of resellers of those products and because it is a little bit oversaturated on there, you tend to get those brands, their products for pretty cheap. Most if not all of my Charlotte Tilbury quads I've picked up at Macari or Poshmark and I've gotten them at 50% off. Even the big Charlotte Tilbury holiday palettes I've picked up at Poshmark for like 50% off and you know those big palettes are $75. So if you are interested in those brands specifically, I would definitely say check out Macari and Poshmark and those palettes that I picked up were all brand new. Like the, you, As you see, the Rose Quartz palette, completely brand new. The other one I have is the Naughty palette. This is also a Macari find, completely brand new. 
and I paid like 50% of what it actually retails for. So that's just a tip for you guys. You all know I like to share my tips and tricks. But beautiful, mauve neutral palette. Gorgeous. So pretty. I haven't played in this one yet, but it is on my list. I promise you guys. Uh, let me just stop saying it's on my list. I'll get to it when I can. I'm trying. Doing my best. Okay, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I hope you realized by now that you probably should have grabbed a snack, a beverage, some kind of indulgence because I'm looking at my camera and I'm realizing it's been like 45 minutes and we have one basket left and a couple of stragglers just kind of all over the place. So let's keep going. Let's dive into the one, two, three, fifth basket. I think we're in the fifth basket. Continuing on with the basket of shame. So... The first thing that I have is another House Labs palette. This was one that I picked up on BoxyCharm. I already know that I'm going to declutter this because it is a neutral palette. And I have so many neutral palettes in my collection, you guys, that I love. Deeply love. Oh, this is pretty, though. Wait, now, hold up now. I might have to keep this. <laughs> She's cute. I've been on this neutral kick, and this is such a pretty one. Oh, my gosh. It has that deep purple. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this one. Damn, I went in here with so much confidence that I oh I'm a hundred percent gonna declutter this. Look at me now. This was cuter than I remember. <laughs> I feel like when I bought it, I was like, oh that's cute, but it is it's cuter than I remember. Okay. So I also have this blue Beauty Bay palette. It's this blue purple one. I like the Beauty Bay formula. I don't know if I love the Beauty Bay formula. I'm undecided. The funny thing is that I placed the Beauty Bay order just for this palette specifically, and I ended up getting the giant green brown one that I put in a giveaway, and now I still have this one, and I still haven't used it when I bought this specifically. Because I like blues, and you see these four shades here? Get me every time. And then there's these three purple. I'm gonna hold on to it for now. Just hold on. Okay, so I have these two little itty bitty Smashbox, pal Smashbox palettes. They're so cute. This one is a kind of neutral greenish color story. It's beautiful and I wanted to use this, but I'm not going to. So I'm just going to give it away to my sister. And then I have this warm neutral color story. It's the Ablaze palette. Also really pretty, but not one that I'm going to use. So I'm going to give away both of these. Okay, then I have the Gnome Chrome Halloween eyeshadow palette. This was a, I think it was a limited edition one from Sugar Drizzle Cosmetics that they released last year. It's an all shimmer palette. I'm kind of over all of these all shimmer palettes. This one is beautiful, but I am, so I'm going to keep it for now, but actually it's really pretty. It's real pretty, but I'm really much over these all shimmer palettes, but I'm definitely going to keep this one because they got some cute looking multi-chromes in there look like true multi-chrome looking type of shades okay i have this nabla poison garden palette i might be able to get rid of this one yeah this one can go i love nabla because they have a really interesting formula or formulas it reminds me a lot of huda beauty it is super underrated this is you know made in italy amazing shadow quality and you get a ton of different formulas which i love so you'll get some more textured ones, you get some more smooth ones, you get some more toppery shades. I don't know why I haven't reached for this one. I'm going to allow myself to let this one go. That was a real slow, deep... It does hurt a little bit, but I'm trying to make room for more and better. So I'm going to let myself just release it to the universe okay let me just keep going so i don't dwell on it i have this tobago palette this is from tobago you know it's from trinidad tobago this one's not going anywhere because it is i forgot to stick down the shade it fell out last time too so it is from, because it's from trinidad and tobago you all know that's where i am born and raised i'm gonna hold on to this just you know it's from my home country i can't declutter this i can get rid of the other one but this one no yeah so 
so beautiful okay now we're finally at the other sigma palettes that i mentioned i told you guys i bought a lot so i first have the untamed palette this is one of the ones that i was really interested in getting from the brand it kind of reminded me of the subculture palette a little bit really beautiful green mustard type you know shades i thought that this could be a really nice fall palette uh, i love that the sigma palettes come with a brush this one definitely doesn't have a ton of shimmers in there but i'm i'm looking forward to trying this i've heard mixed things about the sigma formula like i know morgan turner doesn't like it but samantha march does i also know that sigma has a huge influencer marketing strategy which i don't want to say it influences the way in which they view the palettes but it might actually you know so there's that to consider i also picked up the warm neutrals palette because like i said i'm on this like neutral phase of life so this one definitely is you know warm neutrals pinky neutrals super cute the shimmers in these palettes don't exactly look like high shine they look more like satiny shimmers so that's why i'm like i don't know if i'm gonna really enjoy these not that i don't like satin shimmers you know y'all know how i feel about zendo but we'll see I should have bought one. I don't understand how I could buy three slash four palettes from a brand that I have not tried the formula of and I just don't know if I like it. That don't make any kind of sense, y'all. Jamila, Jamila, Jamila. I deserve to be kicked in the teeth. Anyways, moving along, I have the Chinchilla palette from Tommy Tanuga. This is not going anywhere. Y'all know how hard it is to get her products anyways. But yeah, this is the Chinchilla palette. It is a cool toned purple palette. Definitely wish it had more depth in there. This is also pretty gray and, you know, gray on my yellow skin can sometimes look a little casket ready. So hopefully it shows up really well. But honestly, the Tommy Sunuka formula is like right up there with Pat McGrath. It's chef's kiss. So I'm not ready to give that up just yet. Then I have this Major Love palette from Too Faced. I picked this up at the CCO. I think it was in there six for 60 sale or something like that it's so cute though look at that it is so pretty and typically these tin palettes tend to have a really amazing like formula this gold is gorgeous and this green is pretty this is like a good pocket palette for travel and i remember swatching this and actually liking the formula of this so i'm gonna hold on to this because it's just so tiny and cute um for now for now Next, I have none other than a Colourpop palette. I know Kara from Beauty and the Frizz loves this. It was on sale. I figured, let me try this because I feel like this is one that everyone raves about. I've been disappointed by Colourpop time and time again, so I don't know why I picked this up to disappoint myself again. Um, and I actually think I might just declutter it. Like, I don't like the Colourpop formula. I know I don't like the Colourpop formula. Why did I buy this? Why? Tell me why. Tell me why ain't nothing but a... Okay. Seriously though, why did I buy this? I know I don't like the Colourpop formula. Maybe I'll give this to one of my sisters. Yeah, that that's gonna be the wave. I am not gonna use this. I know I'm not gonna use it. I don't like Colourpop. I just, I don't. They're never gonna send me PR. <laughs> it's okay. It's a-okay. Uh, the last smallish palette that I have is this Cutie palette from Nabla Cosmetics love 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 nabla i've said it time and time again this is one that i've been dying to use because it is a gorgeous neutral palette and it has a ton of textures in there this black is a cream to powder black same with the brown there are three cream to powder matte shades oh and these shimmers look like these beautiful toppery iridescent type shimmers this is definitely not going anywhere because when i see this i drool like i literally get so excited when i see this palette this is also another one that was made in italy but y'all don't sleep on the nabla formula because it is superb and quite frankly the price that nabla charges for these palettes from italy is honestly really affordable so if you want that good formula good diversity of textures check out nabla don't sleep on the nabla formula okay i also have this ayana palette from natasha donona it's a little cool toned baby palette this was one of those boxy charm things that i picked up i'm gonna hold on to this because i think this is a really nice one and done kind of palette where you get all of the mattes that you would need and two pretty decent shimmers for a nice cool tone look 
So I'm gonna hold on to this and add it with my other Natasha Denona five fans. And it was pretty reasonably priced when I picked that up. Okay, I'm down to my last two palettes in this basket and then I have like four, three stragglers, four stragglers, six, five. I can math, I promise you. Two, four, I have five stragglers. Okay, so I have this Melt Rust palette. Um, Melt Cosmetics is a really beautiful brand if you like all matte looks because their mattes are super pigmented, easy to blend, and they really work for deeper complexions. I love, at least the ones that I picked up, I love the sort of shade selection that they have for deeper complexions. Now their shimmers do tend to be pretty deep as well. So oftentimes you may not find a highlight shade, you may not find in a corner um, highlight shade in the palette, you may not find a light shimmer, and you may realize that every look that you create kind of goes a little bit grungy. And that's because a lot of the times their shimmers tend to be in that deep grungy vein. So Melt is sometimes a palette that you have to mix with others. And I do think that it is a little bit overpriced for what it is because the shimmers are meh in quality. They're not super shiny, super sparkly. They do take a little bit to work with and they can be really temperamental. But the mattes are superb and sometimes you can get really beautiful looks from it. And I think that this is a really nice one, especially for fall. It's a beautiful, beautiful palette. Also, it has those kind of like warm shades that I don't think are too orange that sometimes can be, you know, a little too warm. But yeah, anyways, I'm rambling now. And then the last palette in this basket is the Mary Jean palette. Now, you're probably like, why did you buy that? No one liked it. I know, I heard them. Nobody liked this palette. I still wanted to try it to see if I would like this palette because this is a color story that really drew me in. I thought that the color story for this was beautiful. This had more shimmers than Melt typically puts in and I felt like the shimmers had a little bit of extra texture to it. And you know, Melt typically gives us those kind of smoother shimmers. So I wanted to see how the textured shimmers in here works. Now, I also know that that was the issue that most people had with this palette was the textures wasn't really texturing the way that they needed it to texture. I know that didn't make any kind of sense, but I know you also got what I was trying to say. So we'll see how this goes. I I don't want to say I have faith, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that there have been many palettes that people have disliked that I really enjoyed, like Zendo. So, you know, it really is like sometimes you got to try it for yourself and figure out if you want it. No, for the stragglers that I mentioned. First up is Patricia. So I actually did go ahead and buy the Pat McGrath holiday palettes that came out. I was kind of hoping to wait for her Black Friday sale, but you know what? I was able to get it at 15% off and then my palette came damaged, so I got a 15% refund. So at the end of the day, I kind of got like 30% off anyways. And it, it, it is what it is, right? Like, plus it was a bundle deal. So I bought the bundle when she had the two palettes, the two little palettes plus the Mothership Mega. So with the bundle deal, you already got like 10% off. I was able to get my 15% off on top of it. So, you know, addition. And then because mine came slightly damaged, I was able to get more money off. So at the end of the day, I saved some money. I'm happy. Could I have saved more if I waited? Yes. Should you wait until you can save more? Absolutely. But that's neither here nor there. First up, I have the Bronze Bliss palette. You guys have seen this from everybody, so this isn't gonna be new. This I think is really, really beautiful. Like when you see it up close, you can see the different textures and you realize, oh, this is really is like a different formula than she's had before. So it's still pretty sparkly, super shiny. It kind of feels like a mix between her regular shimmer shade and her special shade. Like something that's in between that's like probably more expensive than the shimmer shades, but less expensive than the super sparkly special shades that allows her to make it at this price point. So that's kind of what I got from looking at this. I haven't swatched it yet, so we'll see how I feel about the formula and the textures, but it definitely felt like she gave us something that was in between. And I like that, I appreciate that. You know, you gotta keep things fresh, keep things, you know, moving and shaking. So that was the Bronze Bliss one, and then this is the other one, which is the more pinky, rosy toned one. And the pans in here are definitely smaller than her typical pans, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Y'all already know. When your collection is this big, there's 0% chance that you're actually gonna use things up. So if I can get smaller pans at a cheaper price, please sign me up. Where is the dotted line? Who do I call? Who do I talk to? 
like I said, I got the Mothership Mega. So one of my shades actually did fall out to hold it up. And it did end up scratching this one. So I'm trying so it doesn't fall out again. But yeah, you guys have seen the Mothership Mega already. I will say... I was not excited when I saw this. And... <laughs> I know many of us were like, yeah, we asked Pat for color, and then she gave us color, and we were like, eh, okay. I haven't played in this yet. I don't expect this to be any worse quality or better quality than the previous Mothership Megas, so I don't think quality will be an issue. For me, it's just the color story, and it just doesn't call to me the same way in which the ones from last year and the year before did. But that's just me. I also managed to pick up the Isamaya palette. This, there was this like secret coupon going around, which I think was supposed to be for Isamaya staff only. So I was able to get this for 30% off. Now the coupon is now dis is now disactivated. Is that a word? Unactivated. It's, hold on, why can I not English? Deactivated. De <laughs> that is the word I was looking, I was like, I know that doesn't sound right. Oh my Jesus. I've been on here for too long. It's been over an hour, so deactivated. <laughs> the coupon code has now been deactivated so i won't even bother to share it with you guys but there was a coupon code going around that you that allowed you to get 30 percent off of the isamaya website so i did pick up her new palette i will say that it's definitely smaller than i thought because the retail price of this is 105 dollars. okay so i was expecting bigger a little bit more something extra but she tiny so there's that, but for 30% off, I think it came up to like $85, so I'm gonna I'm let it slide. But here's the Isamaya palette, again, one I'm sure you've already seen before. Definitely so many different textures in here. What I will say immediately off the jump is that there are two black shades. That was such a waste. Like, she could have given us a brown and a black. I don't know why we have two black in there, but that aside, I do like that I can see so many different textures, and I think that this would be a really beautiful palette, and I'm excited to play in this one. Because I've seen some looks and I'm like, okay, it's giving. Definitely giving. Packaging is not necessarily my fave. Also would not make this easiest to store, but it is what it is. And then the last palette that I want to talk about is the Nelly Natural Palette from Glaminatrix. Now this is an Australian brand and I did do the pre-order. So I waited quite a bit for this one to arrive. But it was well worth the wait because look at this. Beautiful. You can already see from the lighter shades that they have pretty good depth, that they would make really great transition shades in my complexion. And you probably don't see it, but there's so much sparkle to these shimmers that I am so excited. I can't wait to put this on my eyes. And I love that there are kind of like three different neutrals in here. So you get the kind of browns, bronzy neutrals. You get a little bit of cool tones. And then you have greens, and then you have pink. So I feel like... Even though this is a neutral palette, you get those four different kind of variations, which makes this pretty versatile in my opinion. So I'm looking forward to getting this on the eyes, seeing how I feel about the palette, how I feel about the formula. This is my first Laminatrix palette. I've been really hesitant because I know that one, it ships from Australia. It takes a long time to get here. A number of folks who've ordered from the brand have had their stuff arrive damaged. And, you know, it's just not worth it at that point to get a new one when it's coming from so far. So it's just something that I was really hesitant to buy when, um, but that one, that one, that one pushed me over the edge. So that is the last one, that palette that I actually have in my possession. Okay, and I say that that's the last one I have in my possession because I actually did end up shopping the Sephora sale. I will do a haul video for you guys, but I did pick up some palettes. So I want to, I guess I'll share them now in like insert pictures because they are technically in my basket of shame because I've never used them. I mean, are they a shame yet? But anyways, let's just go through. So, the first palette that I picked up is the New Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Eyeshadow Palette. I'll say this off the jump, even not having it, I don't think that that's a palette anybody should buy. I think it's hella overpriced, $68. What is Mario smoking? Because, is he gonna share? But anyways, I wanted to try it because I feel like I've seen mixed reviews on it, especially amongst the deeper skin community. Like, so, like, medium, tan, deep. Like, I've seen it work for folks, but I've also seen folks swatch it and it not look great. Now, I know swatches don't tell the story of it all, but I haven't really seen anyone with a truly, like, deep complexion really review it in a way that I was able to dive in and, and get a good sense of, does this have adequate depth? Now, 
Tara Lynn did do a really great review on her channel and she did a lot of comparisons to other palettes on the market and I will say this this is not a new palette this is not anything special the color story isn't special I honestly don't even know if the shimmer formula is that special I know some people are saying that it is I don't believe it I haven't tried it yet though so take that with a grain of salt but I did pick it up because I want to try it and best believe I'm going to be very critical because I think it's stupid priced and if it doesn't you know blow me out to the water that is going right back to Mr. Sephora Miss Sephora ma'am whatever I'm not keeping it if I don't think that it's going to blow me out the water. If it, if it doesn't blow me out the water, she gotta go. Bye. Anyways, so that's the first palette that I picked up. I also went ahead and picked up the original Patrick Ta Major Dimension palette. Now, I know I didn't love the rose one, but I want to try this uh, the original one, which is like that brown, because I've been really into neutral shades, like I said. I've been really into just basic browns <laughs> lately, so I want to try that one, and I think that... It might fill the gap that I was like trying to fill with the Makeup by Mario palette. Honestly, I bought this one before I bought the Makeup by Mario because I thought it would fill that gap because it's a bigger palette, you get more shades. I thought that, you know, I was doing something, but then I ended up buying the Makeup by Mario palette anyway, so that happened. But I'm gonna try it, and honest, again, both of those are, could go back to the store if they don't work for me. Definitely not keeping it if I don't think it's gonna work. And then the last two palettes that I picked up is I picked up the ABH Rose Metals eyeshadow palette. I really want to give that one a try. I wasn't too fond of the Nouveau palette, but I think this one has a color story that I prefer to the Nouveau palette. And then I also picked up a Dior Backstage palette in the shade Amber Neutrals, which, again, you see all these palettes I'm talking about are pretty neutral. This is one that I'm hoping I can travel with who work really easily because Dior doesn't give that super high shine, super sparkly kind of look. And I do have like two or three work trips for the end of the year. And I think that this would be a really good travel palette. So those are the three that I picked up. Okay, so that is it. That is my eyeshadow basket of shame. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me do that. I just want to quickly show you guys uh, what I'm decluttering. So two, four, five six eight so there's eight here plus i have three more so that's 11 so i'm decluttering 11 palettes from my basket of shame um and i feel good like it's not a lot and i'm not a huge declutterer so if, if you were expecting that <laughs> then yeah wrong place but it's not a ton of shadows but i am glad that i am i'm getting rid of some of the ones that i'm like it's just not for me i know i'm not going to use it um to that extent so Again, 11 palettes that I'm getting rid of. One is kind of a maybe. I'm still torn on this Hello palette. If y'all can think of a reason why I need it, let me know down below. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. If you you know, haven't already done so, there's a little red button. There's also a little bell next to the red button, which will let you know every time I upload. So you might want to click that one too as well. Share with a friend if you think they will like the content. As always, I love you guys so very much. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.